Hey everyone, welcome back to Berlin Noir. And today we are working in Alexander Plots. So this is something I've been wanting to work on for, you know, some time now. Uh, I mean, it's definitely a iconic location in Berlin, both today as well as really for, you know, 100, almost 200 years in the history of the city but uh yeah so i guess let's get into it so we start out uh with the alexander platz bonhoff uh so this is uh the model got off the workshop which is based on the current modern uh train station so as you can see it's quite modern but with, you know, there's definitely some exceptions to what I'm about to say, but for the most part, the train station hasn't changed that much since, you know, the when it was, or at least 1929, when this is set. I mean, obviously, the glass modern walls, which I'm covering up right now, have uh, changed, and the glass above that as well. But as far as the size and just the... Uh, structure and the roof as well it's really all more or less stayed pretty much the same throughout the years and even after world war ii when it was rebuilt so yeah that's pretty nice because i could really use this modern asset and what i did was as you can see here just use some little buildings here and with uh, procedural objects i was able to just shrink it down so you know basically it was just a more or less just a wall that I was putting up and uh, just go around the entirety of the train station at least the uh, you know bottom half of it uh, and also at the very start of the video I put uh, stairs to cover up the escalators even though at the very top where the escalator meets just I guess the walkway uh, you can see right there at the very top of the uh, screen there for a second that uh, there's like some little moving parts there. The animated escalator is still moving. So I might go, I didn't I didn't add anything on there, any sort of like poppable surface or anything to fix that. I, I'll probably go back and do something because also the texture for the tiled walkway isn't the best on the uh, station. So yeah, that, that might be something I'll go back and fix off off camera you know after the video uh you know something small that i mean this video is already 27 or over 27 minutes long so you know longer than usual but uh and <laughs> kind of funny but uh, i also i lost a pretty decent amount of footage as well so once we get there i'll explain what i built and what happened and you know You'll see, of course, what I built in the cinematics, but that allowed me to do some other things in the area, and uh, frankly, yeah, probably made the episode better because what I ended up building at the later in the episode is pretty cool. Uh, I guess, yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll get to that when it comes. But uh, for now, we're just again working on this, covering it up using a lot of copy and paste. But uh, as I build this, I guess we can. Uh, discuss and get into you know the history of Alexander Plotz. Um, you know it's something I definitely kind of want to try and do a little more as we uh, in future videos is it, you know to talk a little bit about what I'm building and you know the history especially something as important and you know as, as iconic as Alexander Plotz. but so I mean I know I mean, I think it's like about 20% of my audience is from Germany, according to YouTube analytics, and uh, about half of that is from the U.S., so there's a large percentage of unknown, so, you know, it's probably not 20% from Germany and 10% from the U.S., I'm sure it's, you know, much more than that for both, but uh, I'm assuming the ratio, the percentage-wise, it probably... Two to one as far as German viewers to, you know, American viewers, which, you know, I totally love, but it gets, uh, I feel a little funny talking about, uh, you know, German history and everything, because I'm sure you all know 
far more than I do, at least, you know, I hope, I suppose. I mean, there's plenty of just dumb Americans who absolutely know nothing about American history. I mean, you give them a map of the U.S. and they'll be like, what, is that Africa or something? And it's, it's truly painful to watch. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I digress. I'm kind of getting off track. But anyways, back to the history of Alexander Platz. So, back in early 1700s, back in 1701, when Frederick I, uh, King of Prussia, was coronated, uh, he came to Berlin, and as he was coronated in Königsberg, uh, the plat or the plaza here came to be known as Königsthorplatz. So, for some time, for about a hundred years, I should say. That's more or less the official, unofficial name that this area went by. There weren't a lot of, or I should say the, uh, when you think of Alexander Plotz today and back in like the 1920s and 30s, it was very commercial, a lot of department, uh, department stores and just a lot of commercial areas. It wasn't quite like that all the way back then. That was definitely a later development. But as, you know, re uh, retailers and just commercial buildings and even hotels began to fill up the area eventually like i said about 100 years later uh, the russian tsar alexander the first came to berlin and i guess in his honor the plaza was named after him it became alexander Platz, which you know is you know i, I something unique i never i mean i figured and when at least you know when I was learning about the area and just having heard Alexander Plotz before, I always thought that was a peculiar name because I could never think of any sort of, you know, German uh, king or any sort of Kaiser later on that was named Alexander. Of course, you know, Alexander the Great of Russia and all the later ones. So, yeah, and actually to come to learn that that was, in fact, what it was named after was definitely something cool I found out about this. But... Yeah, so, anyways, as the years progressed after it was named Alexander Platz, there's uh, two pretty uh, big department stores moved into this area. Uh, there was the Tietz department store as well as the Wertheim department store. So, these two just large, grand department stores were... You know what? I, at least from what I could gather, reading about the history of this area, really kind of made this area what it was. It turned it into a really popular area for shopping and just for you know people to go and enjoy their daily life in the area. But uh, and which is really cool is there what there is an asset on the workshop, which is modeled after I forget which one, but it is modeled after one of the department stores. But for whatever reason, it, the asset creator requires, uh, what's the, uh, it was a, it's a free DLC, Pearls of the East, Pearl of the East, uh, I forget the name of the, the DLC, but it's a free DLC, and I tried to install it, but it just, it was really weird, like, I mean, help me out if any of you ran into this yourselves, but when I went to install the DLC, it would open up the game just to play it. It would never go to Steam and go up in the library to download or install or anything like that. Just when I hit download, it would just run Steam and try and play the game. And I looked up, uh, you know, tr trying to troubleshoot, trouble, uh, troubleshoot it. I'm trying to look it up on Google to see if there were any other people that ran into similar issues. But I didn't really, I didn't really uh, see anything, at least that I wanted to try. There was one solution where I had to like uninstall a ton of things, the game, assets, mods, and I was just like, yeah, it's not worth it. So that is one unfortunate thing. I am unable to use that particular asset, which is, it, it really looks very nice. It, uh, at least based on the pictures in the asset or in the workshop, I could be wrong. It could kind of look, you know, Sometimes things look uh, good when you're checking them out on the workshop, and then when you actually get them in game, the lighting or texturing is just kind of off. But at least based on the pictures, you know, it's very pretty accurate to the department stores of this time. So it's a little unfortunate. I do use one building that you know, try to substitute its appearance 
doesn't very doesn't do it justice really at all. But uh, yeah, I tried my best, I guess. But uh, anyways, yeah. So I guess the last part of history I have for Alexander Plotz is really, yeah, the heyday of uh, Alexander Plotz. You know, the golden years were really from early 1900s up until World War II, which, uh, for obvious reasons, led to a decline in the area. You know, can't have much of a golden year when everything's just completely bombed out. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, obvious, but it's, you know, it's still today, it's, you know, a very popular location. I mean, I'm sure, <laughs> again, everyone from Germany, Berlin, or wherever you're from, I'm sure you know just, you know, how popular it is. I've never been here. I've seen a, plenty of pictures, you know, because of, you know, working on it in YouTube, but also beforehand. And, uh, yeah, also it's uh, in the TV show Babylon Berlin. It's a common uh, place, at least, where, they make some, where they've done some of the shooting for the, uh, for the TV show and also just uh, the intro as well to the show. There's a backdrop with uh, Alexander Plotz. Which is very cool to see, but uh, anyways, I guess that's it for that because we get to where I lost a ton of footage. So, you know, just a second ago, I was placing that Alexander Plot sign on the train station, and uh, I after that I started working on the what I would be the department store, you know, which I, or uh, the building that I'm using to be in place of the department store uh, not really exactly like I said doesn't really quite do it justice but you'll see it in the cinematic since I unfortunately lost the footage of that and I mean it, it wasn't much to it it was just I was using PO to kind of shrink the or scale the building down and you know customize it a bit so it looks a little better a little more like the actual building back then and also I used a vanilla department store from the, I think it's just a vanilla European department store asset that you'd find in the monuments tab. I believe that's what it is. I mean, it's nothing I would normally ever use in any other normal thing that I build in this game. But, you know, I was like, I know there's a, I know there's a department store and I, just, you know, I was just looking for it. And I was like, oh, there it is. And I was like, yeah. I mean, it's it's a little modern, but I what I did was I used procedural objects to place some awnings over it because there's these big there's these modern red awnings that didn't look good, so I covered them up with uh, procedural object um, awnings, made it look a little better, add some ploppable surfaces to the roof to cover up some of the HVAC systems and all the modern things, and I mean it turns out all right. You'll see them in the cinematics. I mean, you know, let me know if you don't think it belongs there, then I won't put it there. I'll remove it. Uh, I I believe there was a department store where I placed it about, so that's why I placed it down there. But uh, yeah, again, unfortunate that I lost the footage, but it wasn't super cool compared to what I am building here. So once again, I am working on a Ubon. You know construction which I did several episodes again or ago two or three I'm not sure but I really you know it was something that was pretty cool and I didn't and I, I don't know when I built it like it was I don't like don't get me wrong I like I like it it looks nice but I feel like based on some of the pictures I've seen since there's it, it doesn't look quite like the construction that would have been conducted you know all the way back in 1929. So the images I did see had these, you know, what I'm doing here really, just these tall walls in a, you know, in a deep pit with the tracks being laid. And then as support, you had these wooden, just, you know, supports, which are angled against the wall just to prevent any sort of, you know, I guess, collapse or you know, anything from filling in. But yeah, so, I guess, yeah, it's, I tried to do a little more detail and make it look a little more like it would have back then in this version of the construction versus the one in the previous episode. But even cooler 
then this little segment here is I also, and a little bit later, I work on a spot where it's an actual like Ubon station. So yeah, basically an under construction station. And that turns out pretty sweet. I, yeah, we'll get to that in a, in a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, I know for a fact that there's, uh, I think, what was it? Five or six Ubon lines, I believe, run through Alexander plots today, which, you know, that's a crazy amount, or at least from an American perspective. I mean, I live in a city with one light rail line, runs basically from the uh, eastern side of the city to downtown and heads up north for a little bit. Not much to it, so when you have that many transportation lines running through a single little area, it's pretty crazy. At least, you know, I live in Phoenix and one light rail line, so yeah. Big difference, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, and I know back then, uh, I uh, so as you, um, at least I'm sure most of you know, or if you're new, I've already said it several times in this video. But the videos is or the series is set in 1929, and what's cool about that is Alexander Plotz went through a pretty big, you know, change, uh, more or less a facelift <laughs> uh, during that time. So between, at least based on images that I'm looking at, because I couldn't really find any documented uh, text on this, but you know, images and even some videos, so mo mostly just looking at images, I could tell that between 1928 to 1930, uh, the plaza completely changed. So what I'm building is the pre, you know, pre-renovation, so this would be I guess in 1929 so as far as the timetable goes on when what was constructed when you know certain things were torn down I'm not really sure since I couldn't really like I said I couldn't really find any things written down to actually went to details about what was built here and when but I do know you know in 1930 the there was a pretty a, a pretty big roundabout was put in place of you know uh, You'll probably see in the cinematics. I we're kind of moved on from the area, but but it's just like a little uh, triangular little segment there that I built, which you might have seen. I'm not sure if I it was on video or not. But anyways, uh, yeah. So that was replaced with a roundabout, more so with just a ton of uh, tracks running through it for the trams, and it looks pretty cool. And I was tempted to actually do that to build it like it was in 1930 because I mean again I'm not sure the timetable of when exactly what was built when it was finished when it was completed but so I mean I certainly could have done that I also contemplated just doing a ton of construction more so than I actually do in this episode because I'm actually doing a little construction zone right here but uh yeah considering that this is a historical build the number of assets for you know construction to actually make it look half decent yeah, they're not really there on the workshop so I just decided to do you know small constructions amounts so besides just you know the under construction Ubon line I do this little back lot here just put up some steel uh, I-beams nothing really much to it uh, in this area here, there's, I'm not really sure what the building actually is, or I should say what the company is, but uh, there was, uh, when I've seen pictures, and I think it's even like that today, if I'm not mistaken, but it's like, uh, it's, I think it's called Yonison Co., and uh, it's, you know, and uh, yeah, I'm not, I, I don't know, I believe the sign was taken down, I'm sure, since, you know, then, compared to the modern days. But, uh, yeah, so I believe some company called Jonas & Co. Uh, built this particular building here and tore down all these. And that's kind of what I'm, at least that's what this construction would be for. It's not really in the shape or really even the location of where it was or where it is. But uh, that's what I'm trying to you know get a vibe of at least so but yeah again it's hard to build construction 
zones when they were set in 1929 just because aside from just these little pickup trucks here the i-beams and some crates there's not really much i can do given given the limited assets but i think it looks fine but here is where we get to the i mean yeah i probably my favorite part of the build is the actual uban station which is under construction so yeah this i was just i didn't see this on any sort of you know pictures or videos i just was like yeah i like i said since i know there's a ton of uban lines that run through here i'm sure at some point in time during the you know renovation of this area that there was an open pit in which they were building the stations or something in this area and it looks pretty cool if i don't say so myself but uh yeah so one thing that i'm sure some of you would point out if i don't mention it if i didn't mention it right now but uh i'm pretty certain every single uban station maybe with a couple exceptions but every one that i've ever seen the platform is always in the center of the tracks so the tracks are you know on both sides of the platform and that's there's a ton of you know even subway systems in the u.s i'm pretty sure most are like that really the only instances i can think of that you know at least the majority of tracks or platform or stations are like you know how i'm building it here is like actual train stations where you have the platform on opposite sides and the track running through the middle so when I was building this, that just never came to mind. I was building it and yeah, I just, just never thought about it until it was already done and I was just checking it out, taking some screenshots and I was like, eh, I, and I was like, yeah, crap, I kind of did this wrong. So that's, I'm, that's probably something I can just go in and fix pretty easily. You know, I just, instead of placing down the double track there, I can just place down the single tracks. Although now that I'm thinking about it and actually saying this out loud, I'll have to redo the tunnel as well, which, eh, I don't know, that may be not really easy or not worth it. Uh, I'll, ch I'll check it out for sure. <laughs> uh, maybe post some screenshots of uh, it redone on Instagram, or you know, maybe you'll see it in the next episode. But uh, speaking of the next episode, a lot of you have wanted me to do an overview episode where I just show you all what has been built so far. And, you know, also I'd want to give, you know, my thoughts on future plans and where we're going to go in the series. But, uh, yeah, so those of you that have been asking for that, it is your lucky day because I'm, unless something else comes up or I just suddenly get inspiration to build something else in the city, episode 15, which is going to be the next episode, is going to be an overview episode. So probably not going to build anything. But uh, just going to show you guys everything that's been built so far. And it, it is a lot. I mean, a lot of different areas. And we started out with the Brandenburg Gate and worked around with the Tier Garden. And then from there, just kind of built around that area, built the train stations, uh, the Potsdamer and Alnhalter Bahnhof which were probably two of my favorite builds that I've you know probably ever done they were just really cool and look awesome from an aerial view with all those tracks weaving around and also now with the uh train yard that's on the opposite side of the canal there that ping Yao built i mean that whole area just looks pretty sweet and i can't wait to finish that up and build all the way around that because that's going to look so cool but you'll at least get to see some of that in the overview episode next week but uh yeah and so yeah, basically we built a ton of things, pretty big variety, and I mean I've gained a decent amount of subs since I you know first started this series. So I'm sure there are a number of you watching this who you know didn't watch those episodes since you've subscribed fairly recently or whatever it may be. So yeah, just all around. Next episode is going to be an overview, and I'm looking forward to it because also. Since you guys are going to be able to actually see what's been built so far and also what's not been built, so you'll be able to see all the holes that are in between areas that I built and you know everything like that. So I hope with all that you'll all be able to 
give me some great recommendations and ideas for future builds. Because, you know, it's hard to give recommendations when you don't really know exactly what's been built and what's been built where. So hopefully, yeah, in the next episode, I'll get some awesome ideas and stuff from you guys. And yeah, I'm sure that'll be great. But uh, yeah, so looking forward to that. And I hope you all are too. But anyways, so we're finishing up the construction zone here. As you can see, I didn't do too much to this station area. Uh, I once again used the uh, kind of like door thing that I used on the train station as well because I didn't really know what to put as like a gate or some sort of door for the train station. So, uh, I mean, I don't know. It looks fine, I guess. But uh, just trying to add some construction-ish looking props, dirty stuff, trash, whatever it may be. I don't know, I'm just kind of at this point just plopping down random crap, kind of. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, in the end it looks right. I mean, the Cinemax are pretty sweet, and there's still a lot in this area that needs to be built to really tie it together, but, yeah, it's definitely coming along, and I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode. Uh, we're coming to the end of the episode here pretty close. And, uh, so yeah, again, I hope you're all looking forward to next week when we do the overview build. And uh, again, always leave your recommendations in the comments. And if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. And yeah, to everyone as well, just go ahead and like the video. We're getting close to a thousand subs, so that's pretty awesome. Cool milestone, you know, great motivation for myself. But yeah, hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you next week.